Welcome to Bible Tract Echoes. This program is the radio ministry of Bible Tracts Incorporated. Our mission is to take the Word of God to all the world. Our Bible teacher is the director of Bible Tracts, Pastor Mark Smith. Since 1938, Bible Tracts Incorporated has been publishing clear gospel tracts and supplying them to churches, missionaries, and individuals all over the world, and all at no charge. Information on how you can receive a free sample pack of our tracts will be given at the end of this broadcast. Now for our Bible study, here is our teacher, Pastor Mark Smith. How do you do, my friend? Welcome to the broadcast today. Thanks so much for joining us. Right now, my Bible is sitting open to the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 24. Gospel of Matthew, chapter 24. We are in a series of broadcasts dealing with Bible prophecy. We're dealing with the subject of the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thanks for listening today. You want to, if at all possible, get your own copy of God's Word out and join me. Matthew, chapter 24. I will be referring to chapter 21 of Luke, and I'll be referring to some other places. I'll also be reading some extended verses out of Revelation. 6, but get your Bible to Matthew 24 and also get something on which you can jot some notes. We really do try to make our Bible study time very, very clear so that you can review it and even pass it along. I have in my hand a gospel tract. Now, a gospel tract is simply an evangelism tool. A tract is a short written presentation of God's plan of salvation. The one in my hand right now has a one word title. It is trans transformed with an exclamation point, transformed. That's what God does when he saves a soul. He transforms them from death to life, from unholiness to holiness. I want to tell you about this track. I want to give you this gospel track along with a sample packet of tracks. But let me lead into our Bible study time this, this way. Several years ago, a pastor told me of a 19-year-old man This pastor served in a church in a small town in upstate New York, and the 19-year-old man had recently received Christ, and that's a good thing, but the young man came from a family where for three generations, the dads had been the town drunks. Well, the 19-year-old was trying to find a good job, but no one would hire him. Why? It was his last name. That name was identified with laziness and drunkenness, and I think you understand that 19-year-old man's dilemma. But here's another word, another word that has fallen in difficult times. The word is fundamentalist, a fundamentalist. Now, as I said, that word has fallen on hard times and due to some right reasons and frankly, some wrong ones, but it's a great historical word. And many believers today, instead of fundamentalist, prefer to use the word evangelical. But here's my point. To be a historical fundamentalist or a historic evangelical, there are some basic doctrines you must hold to, and one of these is the personal bodily return of Jesus Christ to this planet. Now, we're dealing with just that doctrinal truth yesterday, today, and tomorrow, Lord willing. Today, I want to look at the characteristics in which Jesus will return. So get your Bible, get pen and paper, let's jump into the Word of God. I mentioned the gospel tract here a moment ago. This one, as I said, is entitled Transformed. It's a testimony track. It's the testimony of a man named Don Price. On the front face of this gospel track, there is a picture of an open Bible with a pair of handcuffs on it, and here's why. Don Price was shot while in the midst of a robbery, and the policeman who shot him and so on uh, did so for the right reasons. Don Price was found guilty, went to jail, but there he found Christ. He found Christ in prison, and by the way, this gospel tract happens to be used in a lot of prisons across the United States. It's a great tract for men. As I said, it's used in prisons. It talks about the power of God to take a broken life and make a powerful servant from that life because Don Price became a great preacher of the gospel. He knew how to tell people how to get saved because he knew what sin was. He knew the price tag of sin and what was the transformation transforming power 
of the grace of God found in the person of God's only begotten son, Jesus. Here's a great tool. Please let me send it to you. At the end of the program, my announcer will make known three ways by which you can give to me your name and mailing address. Please do that today and we'll send you a sample packet containing 41 tracks. This one's included. Do that today. You can go to our website, which is BibleTracksInc.org. All right, Matthew 24, beginning at verse 29, it says this, Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of heavens shall be broken. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he shall send his angels with great sound of trumpets, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of the heaven to the other. Stop, please, right there. Now, yesterday, I began using a series of words, all beginning with the letter C, like in the word cat, and I'm using these words to aid me in laying out the key facts dealing with the second coming of Jesus. Yesterday, I used the words claim and complete claim and complete. Jesus claimed he would come again, and Jesus must come again to complete the prophecies of all that Messiah would do when he comes. Now, my word for today is the word characteristics. Characteristics. What will be the characteristics at Jesus's second coming? Let me use some words beginning with the letter T. First of all, the timing of Jesus' second coming. The timing. Jesus will come again, we're told here in Matthew 24, at the end of the tribulation period. Now, when we studied the battle of Armageddon on the broadcast, I said then concerning the battle that it comes at the end of the seven-year tribulation period, and the battle ends with Christ's return in victory. Our verses here in Matthew 24 said that he comes at a time when all the powers of heaven are shaken. If I were to turn over to Luke 21, it's a parallel passage, and verse 25 there adds these facts, that when he comes, that there will be distress of nations and the earth's oceans are in a tumult. Another cross-reference you may want to jot down is Isaiah chapter 5 and verse 30. Now, there are more, but those verses deal with the timing of his second coming. Now, let me move to the terror, my second T word, the terror at his coming. The second characteristic of Christ's second coming will be the terror in the hearts and lives of people that are on the planet at the time. Our verses here in Matthew 24 said these words, Then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. But listen again to a verse from Luke 21, 25. It says this, Men's hearts failing them for fear. I don't often read extended portions of Scripture, but I want to today. I want to come to the book of the Revelation, chapter 6. If you're taking notes, I'm going to be reading verses 12 through 17. Listen to the terror people will be controlled by at the time Christ returns. Revelation 6, beginning of verse 12. And I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal, and lo, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became as blood, and the stars of heaven fell to the earth, even as a fig tree cast off her untimely figs when she is shaken by a mighty wind. And the heavens departed as a scroll when it is rolled together, and every mountain and island was moved out of their places, and the kings of the earth, and the great men, and the rich men and the chief captains and the mighty men and every bondman and every free man hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountain and said to the mountains and rocks, fall on us and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne and from the wrath of the lamb for the great day of his wrath is come and who shall be able to stand? 
can you begin, I, I don't know if you and I can, begin to understand the terror that will be in the hearts and lives of people, people who have, who have shaken their fist at God, people have seen the signs and wonders leading up to his second coming and said, we know these signs and wonders are being done by the God of heaven, but we will have no part to deal with that man. Well, we will not surrender to him. We will not make him our savior. Yes, there will be many who receive Christ during this great tribulation period, but when Christ comes again, those who have rejected him, great terror. One final thought here is this. As I said, we've talked about the characteristics of the timing and the terror. Let me give you one more word. It's the word testing. The word testing. If I were to turn to Matthew chapter 25 and begin to read at verse 31 through verse 34, there I would find that Jesus, when he comes, is going to be testing all of the world's people. Just like going to heaven, when you die, you go to heaven or you go to hell. Just like salvation, you are either saved from your sin or you're lost in your sin. There's no middle ground with these issues. When Christ returns, he will judge all the world's people, all that are living. Some he will call his sheep. The rest, Jesus, uh, will going to call his goats. These are ones that have rejected him. The sheep he will put on his right hand side. And he said, blessed to them, come and enjoy your Lord. The goats, though, those who have rejected Christ, will be put on his left-hand side, and listen to me, these are they that are cast into the lake of fire, the lake of fire which really was designed originally for Satan and his angels. But if you do not know Christ as Savior, you do not have God as your father, you have Satan as your father. Jesus said that in the Gospel of John chapter 8. I'm not telling you anything that Jesus has not said. But because the lake of fire was designed for Satan and his angels, those who reject Christ and have Satan as their father, they will be cast into the lake of fire. Now, here is my practical application of all of this that I want you and I to grab a hold of. Two words, please be sincere. Those are my two words, be sincere. If you say you belong to Jesus, If you say that Jesus is my Savior, if you say that I am born again, if you say that God the Father is my Heavenly Father, then please do me a favor and act like it. Act like it 24-7, 24 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Let you and I be sincere and act like we belong to God. Be sincere in our walk with Jesus. Let's either be sincere in our walk or admit you and I really don't know him. The time for sincere Christianity is today. Let me ask you, you belong to a good church. You belong to a church that preaches the Bible. And you've told everybody there that you belong to Jesus, but you are playing games in your heart of hearts. You've got everybody fooled and buffaloed, but yourself and almighty God, and you're on your way to hell. The day will come when God will separate the sheep from the goats, and you're going to be a goat. But today can be a day when God transforms you like he did that man in the gospel tract, transform you from spiritual death unto life if you will just surrender your heart and by faith believe on the Lord Jesus Christ who died and shed his blood that you through him can be saved from your sin. Do that today. Thank you for joining us today for Bible Tract Echoes. If you would like to receive a free sample packet of our tracts, you can contact us by calling 309-828-6888. Our mailing address is Bible Tracks, P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. Again, our phone number is 309-828-6888. And our mailing address is P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. You can also contact us through our website. Our web address is BibleTracksInc.org. Remember, the word tracks is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S. That address is BibleTracksInc.org. May the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him.